Welcome back, Zerke fans, to the March 2018 2v2 tournament. We have round four starting up pretty shortly. Going to be starting out with Tech Omnium Mini Shadowstorm versus Golda and Kingstead. Because I haven't had a chance to really see Tech Omnium Mini Shadowstorm from the start, and this is the second last chance I got. And I want to do next round. Oh, I want to do next round. I... Hmm. At this point, Anir Insane Egg versus Golda and Kingstead is going to be one of the matches. That's pretty much the top spot match. That's what I want to see. Although, admittedly, the other question will be who is going to be in fourth place. That might be a more relevant question as well. My whoever's in fourth place, or might be in fourth place. Hmm. Hmm. So like I said, we do have a double limb bracket afterwards, so it's really a question of what's going to happen to who gets in. Not sure how that's going to work, though. I think it's going to be best... I have to double check if it's best of one or best of three at every level. Because I, if it's best of one, that's going to be, I think, a reasonable amount of time. If it's best of three, that might take a little long. But yeah, Altier Crossing, however, fast map. Like, this shouldn't take more than five minutes for the entire round, I would think. I mean, it might do. I kind of doubt it. We'll see. But I don't expect it to. And looks like uh, there's nothing in the rules about that. So Akronim will have to will have to chime in on that one. But like I said, I think it's going to be best of one for every round. Possibly best of three for Grand Finals. I think it's best of three without bracket reset for Grand Finals is how it'll work. But anyway, we have a... We have the bracket set up. It's really just a matter of what's going to happen here because... I mean, this match is kind of... Okay, it's not the most relevant, I suppose. And actually, at this point, so... Sortel and Google Frog, Mac and Ophelius are likely the ones who are going to be, well, not even really going at it. Honestly, I think at this point, the last round is going to end up being, it's not really going to decide much. Yeah, it's going to be one and three, one and three. Yeah, I don't think, I think it comes down to this round, actually. If Sortel and Google Frog versus Mac and Ophelius, depending on how that goes. If Mac and Ophelius win, they actually end up being in a slightly better position. Well, they have an even position for Sir Tail and Google Frog. But at any rate, that's kind of beside the point. The point is, we have map. We have game. We have people going rovers and gunships on a map that's very tiny and full of reclaim and that is playing extremely fast. And someone going tanks as well? Really? Going tanks on this map? I want to see how this works. Golda with tanks. If anyone's going to go tanks, it's going to be Golda. Actually, it's going to be Lori, but Lori hasn't played in forever. But that's against Rover and Gunship with a Revenant right off the bat. Tech Omni Mini Shadowstorm pushing that Revenant cheese. They want they want Black Dawn Rush. Old school Black Dawn Rush Altier Crossing. I actually don't see anything really ready to deal with this. I mean, the West Side probably realizes something would be up, but... I don't know. This is this is building quickly enough. Noobs are us. Oof. Unfortunately, that last little chunk, if they hadn't built that dart, they hadn't built that dart, they'd be fine. But I think with that dart, they might have sealed their fate. I mean, this is a cheese build. They've, they're have they entirely banking on the idea that the, that the Revenant's going to be able to find the value it needs when it needs it. That dart just needed to not be there. Or the factory needed to be in a higher priority for that entire time. Still, though, they get their economy up, so if they can maintain the Revenant push for a long enough time, they can actually get that pressure. And they do actually force some enemies back. They force some of the Glaze back. They get some of the scouting going. They hit the right targets. This is really a matter of hitting the economy. Make sure the economy goes down. Make Ooh, trying to get the commander is not what I would recommend. At all. In fact, this Revenant is... This Revenant is not going to have a good time. It's going for the commander. I can see why. You know, get rid of the commander, get rid of the storage early on. But it does not have enough fire rate to do that. Not with the glaze firing it. And that is going to be it. Uh, against, against a recon com, no. Not happening. The <laughs> six pool fail. Yeah, that's basically what that was. <laughs> yeah, the zero K six pool. Which is kind of funny because you can't do that in StarCraft anymore. You start with 12 workers. There's no way you can six pool without like burning five workers beforehand. Or six workers, actually. But uh, that's beside the point. Point is, two inside of two minutes, we have game. This game done. So obviously, get another one. No, that's that's the clear message here. 
I didn't expect this would last especially long, but I also didn't expect it would be just a immediate cheese into death. Because that's what it was. So, anyway, I can't... Oh, the brackets are screwed up, whatever. Uh, anyway, let's find the next match. I believe the next match I want to watch... Yeah, so don't go for it because Mackie and Orphelius. That's the one that's relevant to me. That, to me, is the one to look at, because Swordtail and Google Frog versus Mackie and Orphelius, considering the way the bracket standings are, and I know the bracket's having a bit of trouble updating properly. I don't know why, but challenge is being weird right now. Anyway, that aside, if you look at the, if you look at it where 400 Icons did win their match, Mackie and Orphelius lost their match, it's a bit tricky, because Mackie and Orphelius are 0-3 against Swordtail and Google Frog's 1-3, if Sertail and Google Frog are one two, if Sertail and Google Frog lose to Mackie and Orphelius, then it's going to be one three on both sides, and then the next match is actually going to, or the next round, could change who end up ends being in fourth place. But at this point, oh crap! At this point, though, starting out this match, which I unfortunately did not manage to catch, Grizzly starting out very early from Orphelius, using that reclaim to really push hard into the tech, but even that might not be enough. And with that, Orphelius, oh, actually. Okay, so Orphelius managing to push hard. They got that Grizzly. They got that center control. They're managing to really put the pressure on Google Frog's base. But not much is able to deal with that. The Ronin are trying, but they're going down Orphelius with a very strong setup. At the same time, though, we do have Swordtail doing what they can to pull around the south and try to help that. Because overall, though, this is, I mean, Shield and Amphib versus Shield and Cloaky. And that Grizzly opener is a strong opener, but it's a question of how that's going to actually translate in any real wins, because with Swordtail coming in with a counterforce around the south, the, Gri the Grizzly needs to be able to get the drop on them to take that. Of course, it's also worth noting the Gragatures don't really exist. I mean, Gragatures are very expensive now and have a hard time dealing the EMP damage they used to. And they're still here. Not EMP, the disable damage they used to. Disarm damage. But at this point, it's clear that the main way your recursion is going to survive this is build a wall. Build a wall, shoot over it. Not a bad idea, all things considered, but right now, it mostly is working because recursion has an economic advantage. And that's the thing, recursion right now, they've got things set up where they can hide behind a wall. However, they don't have much territory. It's just that this map isn't that economical. The main thing is the south side. If the south side gets taken, if Mackie realizes what's going on and attacks it, it's over. Although, if the Grizzly goes down here, it could work the other way. This could actually be it for Swordtail. However, this is this is support. The Grizzly has the Arch of Support, so it's going to have a much easier time against these Glaives. Way easier than the last game. Nicely done there, Orphelius. At the same time, Thug, Thug Bandit coming in from Mackie, providing a little bit of extra support here. Providing a little bit of extra push support. Of course, the problem on top of that is the rogues trying to deal with Orphelius' commander and generally dealing with the defenses are having a field day doing this, and there is not much that can be done against them. Of course, the question is going to be, what happens if the south is found? And I don't think the south has been even remotely scouted at all. No! Radar is not quite there. So there's no real knowledge on the part of the eastern team about what's going on. They have no idea. Mackie's commander is very close, but if they die here, which they very well will, this is going to be it. This is going to be Mackie and Orphelius dropping to Sartail and Google Frog. I mean, unless a counterattack happens right now. That's it. The counterattack has to happen. There has to be some way of dealing with this. Orphelius, sorry, Mackie has been trying everything they can in the northern side of the recursion base to deal with what they can, but losing that commander is a huge blow. The eastern team lost a lot of storage. They're accessing a fair bit. Should be able to build up that storage as well, but really at this point, just continue. Just finish that caretaker. Don't build the storage. Finish the caretaker. Work from there. You have enough economy. You have the. You just need the build power. <sighs> Care that. Not sure why Mackie did that. I would have really liked to see that caretaker be finished first. Would have helped make this, make the storage done faster. I would also use the build power, which this is now idle on. So yeah, that if, if not for the command, if not the commander, then the fact that there's build power going to waste. That's that's kind of the issue right now. I really don't... Why is it not done? Just build the fucking caretaker! That's bugging me! That caretaker could do so much good for Mackie, and it's not being built. 
And at this point, they're on the back foot, so they've got to have something, because Recursion at 46 metal per second, there's nothing stopping them. And really, like, it's pretty clear that this south side is going to be built up enough that even if it's found, it's still going to be reasonably well defended. So, at this point, there's not a whole lot going in their favor, going in East Team's favor. Especially since there's this build power that's not being used. The reclaim and the energy, yes, but it's like, Caretaker, I don't know how Mackie is missing that. Like, what is Mackie work looking at? Like, really, what is Mackie looking at right now? Okay, they're looking, oh, so they're looking at the front lines trying to micro their thugs. I mean, that makes sense, it's just, I don't know. I don't know why they switched off. I, I know Switch Bug is not finished. I'm more bugged that it was switched off in the first place. Like, the fact that they... They didn't have this... Like, they went to build it, and then they changed to something else, and they haven't actually finished building it, even though they've probably gone back to the base at some point. So yeah, I, I don't know. The fact that they switched off of it is really the problem. Like, the storage is fine, but you're not playing 1v1. In 1v1, it's strictly necessary because you lose storage, and at that point, any amount of metal not being spent is going to be excessed. But when you're playing 2v2, you have another commander. The storage is halved, but it's not gone. So that, that was a strange motivation, and ultimately, it is leading to East Team having a bit of a hard time maintaining a position on this map. But even then, they're actually managing to hold off pretty well, all things considered. Especially since apparently phantoms can't hit bandits. Hmm, who knew? Moving too fast. Now, you'd think snipers would lead, but apparently no. Still, though, the real story here now is the racketeers are up. The racketeers are online, they're stopping the grizzly from doing anything. And unless the grizzly can be saved from the racketeers and the racketeers get destroyed by something, which is possible, there's not really much static defense, They this could be a forward push. Or Phileas and Mackie could just push in and wreck those Racketeers as best they can. I mean, the bandits are here, the phantoms can't really do much against them, it's distracting the phantoms. Really, that's all they need to do, but Mackie is being really skittish about this. Although, they have managed to find some of the metal extractors. They might actually be able to deal with some of the stuff in the south, if they just got the build power up. They built another caretaker, didn't just finish the one that was already here. Is that just me? Is this a bug on my screen? Am I the only one seeing this caretaker? I feel like I'm the only one seeing the caretaker. Or just incomplete care... The I don't even understand what the... They must have some issue with their hockeys or something. It must be like all worker selection key or something. I really want to know what the heck is going on. I mean, like, Recursion is doing fine. Recursion just needs to push it back. If they get rid of the Grizzly, that's it. The towel's thrown. They've got this main base, or this this main outpost up front, pretty much dead to rights. But like I said, I just don't see why Mackie was switching off of that. My guess is that they have their, all their workers hockey to the same button, either the same control group, or they have a selection hockey for all their workers, and use that. Or probably just hockey to the same group, because it seems like, you know, they start one project with some workers, and a bunch of others that were working on the caretakers go away. And, like, that game could have easily gone East Team's way if they had the caretakers to build the army needed to set up against what Recursion had, especially if they defined the South. Like, they thought to look South and thought to look North. They sent one bandit up on either side. That could have at least set things up reasonably well. And they would have known, they would have stopped Recursion's economic lead, and more importantly, they would have used the economy they had. Because it's just, that's the thing. They had all this money, and they didn't use it. I mean, they're excess right now. Look at the metal excess. They have twice the metal excess. 2,700 metal excess, which is more than what they... Oh, no, sorry, Recursion's higher metal excess. My bad. So that's the thing. East Team could actually turn this around, because that metal excess they have, like, put into the army would pretty much, would cover most of the difference. That would get them about 4,500. That'd be a 1,000 behind Recursion. Now, granted, Recursion is also accessing and has been for a while, but the point is they can kind of get away with it. They have a strong army. East Team can't. Or at least couldn't. And at this point, I mean, they're trying, but the build power is being spread out on so many things. What's even the priority in here? Oh, I see. The Fusion Reactor is highest priority. Which doesn't make sense to me. They have enough energy. They don't need... They have static energy they can build, use all their build power with. But hey, the character is finally done, so yay. Too little too late, mind you, but at least I'll stop being bugged <laughs> to an extent. It's more like I said, I don't know what Mackie's doing with their workers, but whatever they're doing with their workers is causing their workers to not build when they... Or that, something causes those characters to not be built, like the characters to be half done and then the worker to walk away doing something else.
Like, I don't know. Maybe it's me. I try to make sure that when I'm doing construction, I don't have those workers on a control group or in any way set them up so that they could be taken out by another project. Just because otherwise that happens. It's easy to make happen if you have your workers hotkeyed. And it might just be that that's exactly the thing. There is a widget, the it's like a centralized building widget, that you put all your workers in the hockey zero and then it does a bunch of stuff to send your workers together. And it, even, it equally splits build labor, but the thing is they're still in a central control group, which means that if you move any of them, they're all going to move. So it's kind of hard to make that work. At this point, though, some snitches are being set up. At the very least, to try to stop the last push from recursion. Not a bad idea, actually. But it's just recursion... If more of the fact that they don't have a whole lot of money to work with, because the map, the way it is, is hard to get the monetary advantage, they'd probably be able to push in by now. And really, that grizzly... Like, these grizzlies are the one thing that's keeping Orphilius in this game. It's the fact that these grizzlies are not dying. At all. And Orphelius has managed to maintain a fairly strong defensive position in the center. And now that Mackie does have the build power up, they can actually use all the economy they have, and if they get any more off Reclaim, that will be very useful. Like, East team is set up to actually possibly take this match, should they have a position from which to take it. If they get that Reclaim, if they get a, some breathing room, then they've got something to work with. But that's the real question. It's like, are they going to do the reclaim? They're mostly working on defenses, and I totally see why. Especially with Orphelius' commander being in a tricky spot, being sniped, potentially. That is still a risky thing. But now that the Grizzlies are up and no longer disarmed, at least for now, obviously that's, that's a temporary thing. That is not going to be forever. But for now. There you go. And with that, Spider Factor being built up probably for Crab, I would imagine, considering the circumstances. Although, maybe not. Maybe for fleas. Maybe just to completely swarm everything. We'll see. I'm actually kind of curious what they're going to build with that. Still, though, we have the amphibs coming up, the ducks coming out. I mean, East Team, they're getting their economy back up. They're getting a bunch of reclaim to work with, and they have the build power to make it work. So while their economy value is still not in a great spot, as long as they can hold things off, and especially if they can distract the racketeers with the dirtbags, then there's a chance. Small chance, but clearly enough that East Team thinks they have it. However, Recursion is now managing to, from time to time, get a high economy. But again, this is a map where you don't necessarily get a massive economic advantage. I mean, granted, there is an economic lead for Recursion. East Team is still going from a point of disadvantage. But, maybe it works. I mean, maybe they find some way of doing this. It's just unlikely. Recursion has the overdrive advantage. Recursion has the static advantage. Recursion doesn't really have the reclaim advantage, but Recursion has now managed to break in the center somewhat. There is the Grizzly push. No Rexiers here to try to help out. But at the same time, there is still the Ronin, and it's as much damage as being dealt. It's not necessarily enough to save the center. Google Frog has moved into the center. It's starting to break up all of the caretakers that are in the center. And it's getting a flank on defenses going as well on the north side. However, the south has been spotted. It has been found out. This is finally East Team getting rid of the south side expansion. Getting rid of Run of Recursion's big expansions that's been keeping them ahead in this game. And granted, Recursion does have this Reclaim and Overdrive going now, but still, that static economy, that's no longer theirs. But, as I always say, if you destroy your opponent's economy, it won't destroy the military they have. Like, military advantage comes first, and then economic. That stops the reinforcement of the military. But, looks like the Thugs are actually having a bit of a hard time. Racketeers aren't as available, so the Thugs are being torn apart by the Grizzlies, and not to mention the Ducks being there, also distracting the Racketeers, also distracting the, the Phantom as well. Making it even harder for Google Frog to push in, but Google Frog with her own dirtbags is managing to get in some damage. Managing to get in a few hits, and there are the Fleas, but that is not what it was used for. It was used for Recluses. That was the whole point of Mackie building that factory. Get that super long-range skirmisher action going, and that should be... Enough to at least even things out and possibly push East back in this game. I mean, East does not want to lose. They need to win this and the next game if they want to have a chance at getting into the top four. A chance. Not even necessarily getting in the top four. Just if they want to be able to have some possibility. And that, that assumes that Swordtail and Google Frog lose the next two matches. So they lose against Mackie and Orphelius. And then also lose against whoever's up next, which I believe is... Who's up next after that? 400 Icons. So if Sertel and Google Frog loot to both Mackie and Orphelius and 400 Icons, then Mackie and Orphelius can move on to take 
fourth place. But that is a very big if. Especially since 400 icons are currently tuned to. So, that's... I mean, that's kind of a scary thing to think about. Like, really, this match for Orphelius and Maki is the most important match in the entire tournament. And they are treating it as such. But at the same time, Google Frog and Swordtail, they just have their army value advantage. Or they did! They don't need more. Not so much. I mean, metal use starting to even out metal income. It's actually slightly ahead for East Team. And that's why it's working out as well as it is, but it's really a matter of whether or not East Team can manage to make that work into a real advantage. And really a large part of it is these Grizzlies aren't dying. And the Rack is finally managing to get some shots and managing to stop the Grizzlies from doing as much damage. But the Grizzlies have been able to do so much damage that East Team is really getting an attrition advantage. Now that Ophelia is onto the Glaives, or onto the Clickabout Factory. Not the Glaives, sorry. What are they building with that? I don't know. Swordtail is building slings. Orphelius has not chosen what to build yet. They just have a Clickabot factory. I guess they like how it looks. Or like how it makes them feel. It makes them feel big. However, they were pointing out they should have gone Cloakies. And now they've want gone Cloakies. I want to see what they do with it. Are they going to go Mask Glaive? No, they're going to go Sling. And they are going to go Mask Glaive. Yes. I was right the first time. Sling. A couple Slings to get rid of some of the defenses. And Mask Glaive to follow up. That's going to be tricky, though. There are so many Reavers on the field, I don't exactly get the point. Granted, the Recklesses will help with that, but even then, that many Reavers, unless the Grizzlies are there and back to support, the Glaives are not going to find much value. And at the same time, the Reavers going around the side with no defenses really in the way. Nothing that's going to stop three Reavers. There's not much to really stop anything. This crab has taken a while to be built up, despite the fact that East Team does have a reasonably strong economy with all the reclaim and has the build power to make it work for them. This crab is still taking a while. The build power has been separated among many things, most notably the fusion reactor, which is at high priority. So the fusion reactor is getting the bulk of the build power right now, and that means that crab is not going to be up in time to stop anything from being sent in the back lines. Thankfully for them, though, Sortel has clearly pushed back. It's clearly not a problem, and now there's the glaives! Not a huge amount of defense to deal with, and the slings have done their job. And there's the Glaives to get rid of the Rogues and possibly open things up. The Outlaw, however, is still being a major problem. The Outlaw and the Stinger. The Phantom, however, goes down in the process, so that is still all the more worth it. But at the cost of Orphelius' commander, that is East Team with no commanders on the field anymore, so that front expansion is essentially as vulnerable as these Grizzlies. If the Grizzlies are there, it's fine. Once they die, it's over. But it looks like they might actually manage to maintain their presence there. Despite all that damage, and despite the fact that Air Factory is up, and we do have some Ravens up, Army Value is... what the heck? Did we just get... No, that's right, okay. Recursion's now yellow for some reason. Anyway, Army Value is now ahead for East Team by almost a thousand metal. Metal income is neck and neck, but the attrition has been in favor of East Team by 3,000 metal. It's really turned things around. I mean, honestly, I wasn't sure how that was going to work, but those Grizzlies being pulled back and gone around again, despite the lack of a Caretaker, it's uh, early on, but now they've got it. Now they have that build power, it's working out because all those forces were coming in from Recursion and the Reclaim wasn't going very far. But now it is. And because of that, these Grizzlies can push, and these Grizzlies that have been here from the beginning of the game, being constantly repaired back up, are managing to really seal the deal here. And Recursion, they're now at a fairly large economic disadvantage. Mostly because of the Reclaim, mind you, but still, even the Static Economy is not that great. Thing is, though, they have the Ravens up. If the Ravens go down, that will be a big deal. The Ravens are known, and I think we're going to see some anti-air to deal with that stuff pretty shortly. Looks like... nothing planned. Hmm. Okay, I guess they're not really concerned yet. They should be. I mean, the air pad's going to be up pretty soon. They sh we will be able to fire off a bunch of sorties in short succession. But, even then... The Grizzlies are able to put the pressure on a sword tail, and this is opening things up. If Orphelius manages to make this push work, Mackie in the back as well to help out that, this will be game. But it looks like, no, the Grizzlies have been pushed back, so game will be postponed for another little while. My goodness, 24 minutes on a map like this. Hmm. Still, though, the Ravens coming in, that is potentially the death blow. No tarantulas are up. Really nothing. No tarantulas, no archers, no gremlins. Nothing to deal with this stuff. Never mind, sorry. There are vandals. There are vandals up to deal with this stuff, but still, that grizzly got heavily damaged. That is the opening needed. And it won't be a very long time before they're completely restocked and refueled. 
Once that's done, the Grizzly is dead. This Grizzly has maybe 10 seconds to live. That's it. Once that happens, there is not much left. Like, 10 seconds to live is not much. It sounds like a lot. Well, maybe it sounds like a lot. I don't know. I never had 10 seconds to live myself. But, yeah, that repair is more urgent than ever. I mean, at least Easton does have the energy to make that work, but, man, this is... This is tricky. Although, on the other hand, Orphelius with the Glaives on the northern side, providing a little bit of damage on top of the bandits, that at least breaking up the northern side a little bit, but Recursion still has that airbase, and it's very difficult to deal with. And the Ravens are being built up slowly but surely, while there are Vandals to help deal with them. Vandals, they're more of a tough anti-air, they're not so much a kill-you-quickly anti-air. So, while they won't go down to Ravens or really anything on the ground very quickly, they won't take out the Ravens very quickly either. However, there's the Razors, so there is something. Like, you have that. It's it's enough to at least support the Grizzlies where they're being repaired. So despite the lack of a commander for Ophelius, this front fire base that's been holding for the rest of the entire game is really paying off. And the Chloe Watt Factory for Sword Tail is down. Google Frog still has the Air Factory, but now all the Vandals are here, able to at least dissuade some of the Ravens, if not kill them outright. But... Even then, the Ravens are still up. That's a big deal. If if Google Frog manages to hold, it's enough. Whether Google Frog manages to hold, of course, is a different story. And Swordtail already wanted to throw in the towel. And that is it. Mackie and Ophelius take their first win of the tournament against Google Frog and Swordtail. A hard won fight. A few misplays here and there on both sides. But overall, that center fire base that Ophelius took right at the start of the game, that ended up giving them the entire match. Like that ended up being the real linchpin of this entire thing. The fact that they didn't get the south side, didn't get the north side, but they had that center. They got, they had those grizzlies around the entire time to hold it. All they needed was either cloaky or spiders. One of the two. Both of them did a really good job. We had the recklesses doing a great job supporting. We had the the glaives doing a great job going around the sides and just harassing where they could. So, that's all they needed was one little push. And once they got the economy, once they got the bill power to make that push work, then it was solid. So yeah, Orphelius, well done, and Mackie, well done. I just point out to Felix because they've been grinding a lot of games and streaming them and really have been working hard. So, I'm proud of them for that. I mean, it's still their 1-3, though. They're still not in a great position, but now they are at least in a position where fourth place is a possibility. Like, if they beat Tech Omni and Mini Shadowstorm and Goo Frog and Swartail lose to 400 and Icons, then, yeah, that's, that's going to be it. That's going to be a... That's going to be fourth place going to Orphelius and Mackie. Of course, if Orphelius and Mackie win theirs and Swordtail and Google Frog win theirs as well, then they're going to have to have a tiebreaker match. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. That's going to be round five, and it looks like round four is done.